Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And I am sorry because of the light. <laughs> the sun is just at a different angle and it's super sunny out back, and I can't do anything about it <laughs> except move to another room, which would be way too complicated because for those of you who watch this frequently you might have noticed i've been gone for a week i had the flu i had pneumonia i have been very sick and my energy level is about a quarter of a tank right now so i am just trying to get by each day and get some things done that have been going by the wayside for weeks after weeks so one of the fun things i got to do yesterday was go up to albany to the healthy dog expo and we'll talk more about that uh, on Wednesday and Thursday before I head off to New Jersey for the Super Pet Expo in Edison uh, next weekend, which is going to be a great thing. So anybody that lives near Edison, New Jersey and wants to make that trip, that is a huge expo. It's one of the biggest ones, if not the biggest, certainly east of the Mississippi. It's a very big expo. I'm speaking there about harnesses and about connecting with animals. So I'm looking forward to that. <coughs> And yesterday, um, I had a great time catching up with my sister and meeting some people from Breakfast with Spaniels and meeting some herding dog admirers. And Tristan was on the local ABC News um, at least twice. <laughs> they did a live spot from there around, I don't know, 11 in the morning uh, with him eating a dog bakery cupcake, which he enjoyed so much I had to buy him some. Uh, and then he was on the later evening news as well. So I don't get the Albany news. I won't get to see how cute he is. But I asked my friend Karen if she could keep an eye out. So Karen, I hope you got to see Tristan on the news. He was one of two dogs there. There was a Bernese Mountain Dog, also a service dog, working there with his person. So it was really a fun day. We did a lot of great stuff <clears throat> and heard several interesting talks, which I can't wait to tell you about and connected with some old Tellington T-Touch practitioner pals and just had a great time. But one of the things that came up um, in a couple of the lectures and that's ongoing, so it's really imperative that I tell you about this today, is this series about dog cancer that is going to eventually cost like $200 for you to buy it. But they're airing an episode a day right now for free for you to watch and it's called The Truth About Pet Cancer, which I realized last night as I was frantically trying to catch up because each episode is only available for 24 hours. <clears throat> and I knew if I got home in time and got started on episode three, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have too much to catch up because I knew I'd get episode four last night. And actually they give you a, a nice review with episode one. So at this point I've only missed episode two which sadly is one that I wish I could have seen. But each part of the series is about different things related to pet cancer, like why are more pets getting cancer? Um, what, what does our food and our vaccine schedules have to do with cancer for pets? And it's pretty amazing what is going on with our pets and incidents of cancer even. They are getting cancer at an alarming rate and it is partially due to the excessive vaccines that we're giving them and partly due to the poor quality of food that we are giving them and the lack of exercise and the toxins in the environment. So this is a really important series. Each one is an hour long and I realized last night when I was watching it that in fact, oh I don't have my glasses on, no wonder I feel kind of blind, um, that the same people did a series called The Truth About Cancer for Humans a few years back, which um, it was maybe five years after I had cancer. So all kinds of people I know were sending me links to watch it. Um, and this is, uh, to me, far more interesting than that series was um, because it does look at the whole spectrum of what's going on with our animals. Um, the, the human one, as I can recall, a lot of it was about not eating sugar. Um, but that may just be the one episode that I caught because I can see that each episode has a focus and 
Um, I did watch a lot of them last time. I don't know. But <clears throat> the important thing is with the dog one, if you go to my sister's Facebook page, Dr. or it's Judy Morgan DVM, there's a link there. And I know that another woman named Jean Locke has been posting it on some of the Corgi pages. Um, if you go to that link and then sign up with your email, they immediately send you an email with a link to the episodes that you are eligible to watch. Now, if you have missed a, quite a few of them and you're fascinated and want to see them all, there's always a chance that they'll have another uh, watching time. I think there, this might already be the second watching time. I don't know. But it is a really important series. And I said to my sister, <clears throat> I don't have a dog with cancer, thank God. And I never have. And I hope I never will. So what is so important about watching this series? We were just sort of chatting. And she said, well, I guess you'd have to watch it to see. And I got to say, it has so much more to do with dog health, dog wellness, how we take care of our pets than it does about dealing with a dog with cancer. You know, that's part of it. That might be one episode coming up down the line when they're talking about treatments. And certainly the treatments for humans are advancing astronomically, practically daily. You know, it's very different now than it was for me even 10 years ago. Um, and I was talking to my mom about the series and she said, boy, I would never get chemotherapy after watching this because of how horrible the chemicals are for your body. I mean, it just is um, like killing yourself. Like, why would you do that? There are other options. So certainly it gives you a lot to think about. Um, but I watched an entire episode about vaccines and over vaccinating with some of the leading vets fighting this fight by doing research of all things. You know, they have to prove that the dog is still holding a titer after so many years. And so they have to track these dogs to prove that we don't need to give them a shot every year, or every three years. And that is a big deal. Thank God some of these people are doing this because research is the only thing that science listens to. Um, and there is another episode on food, which is episode two, which I know a lot about, but I'm sad I missed it. And there are lots of vets that we all know and love that are featured um, in these episodes, including Alan Schoen. He was a pioneer in animal acupuncture in this country. My sister, of course, who is a pioneer in uh, foods for health and many other things. Um, been doing alternative medicine for pets for, I don't know, 20 years now. Um, Jean Dodds, who is an incredible researcher and uh, advocate for decreasing vaccines. Marty Goldstein, who's out in New York State, who is one of my favorite holistic vets. He's been a pioneer in this area since the 80s. I, my horses uh, saw him and maybe even my rabbits. I, he was not too far from me and he's a really good vet. Um, so there's lots and lots of, and many others, um, really well-known vets with, and they're commenting. Um, the series is laid out really clearly so that if you say, oh my gosh, I missed that, there's a quick recap so that you always know what is going on. And it's just so skillfully done. And each episode is about an hour and five minutes long. And I can't encourage you enough to check out the Dog Cancer series. I will probably share the link from my sister's page to my page. Um, but it's just uh, incredible the amount of information that's not just about dogs with cancer. It's really about pet health um, between the vaccines and the feeding and um, the exercise and what's going on on a cellular level in our animals. Really interesting information that really every pet owner should watch. And it doesn't matter if you ever have a dog with cancer. You still need to know Part of why you haven't had dogs with cancer is because you're not over vaccinating them. Maybe you've been feeding them raw for 20 years, so you haven't had a problem with the food. But certainly one of the vets I was watching last night even said, you can do everything perfectly and still end up with a pet with cancer. There's some breeds that are prone to it, some toxins in the environment where you live that may make predispose your dog to being a candidate to get cancer. So you can't, um, miss this series i think it's really important and i think people will be talking about it for a long time so i will share that link and hopefully you'll be able to catch up uh there's seven in the series and up until nine o'clock tonight we're on episode four um, and as i said they gave me a complimentary view of episode one so um, if you're just joining today <clears throat> you may be able to catch up on all but a couple of them and like i said i would keep your ears up because there may be another 
time when they run them for free so that you are able to catch up on the series if you missed any. And I can see that watching this series, if you're in a dog professional field, you might want to own this because there is just so much information in there and people ask me questions about things all the time that I'm not always sure of the answer and I have to go look it up and check it. So um, having this as a resource could be really useful. Plus it helps support the people who make these films um, so that they can continue to make more of them. Um, they've done lots of, uh, they've done one about pet food. Um, they have done a lot of series here and they're very good. So that's our uh, message for today, which is get online and watch the Truth About Pet Cancer series while you can for free. And we will be back on Wednesday and Thursday before we head off to the expo. Um, I'm not sure. We might go down Thursday night or Friday morning. It depends on how I'm feeling about the traffic. we got to be set up and ready to sell out of our booth at like 11 in the morning. So that's a pretty early day driving to New York City. <clears throat> anyway, thanks for joining us for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Uh, still pretty peaked, but trying to get through the day. <laughs> I got a lot of laundry and cleaning. You know, when you're sick, you just don't do anything. <laughs> Take care of the corgi. He was so good for me. He's a good nurse. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, and like I said, check out the series, The Truth About Pet Cancer. It's a must-watch for any pet lover. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Wednesday.